fashion dolls it is Wednesday, wednesday april 17th and welcome to an all new episode of style by stevie our very special guest today is from the shy town area i had to uninstall and then reinstall back but he is here with us so i'm going to add him in so that you guys can see him and hopefully it works fingers crossed i had to uninstall and reinstall back so hopefully it works this time There we are. Hello. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. I'm doing wonderful. Welcome to the dollhouse. It is such a pleasure to have you here. Blessings, blessings. Appreciate it. So before we get into this interview, how has 2024 been for you so far? Um, it's been, it's been uh pretty smooth so far. Um. Just uh just been working and um uh, I don't know, just you know, just uh seeing what you know God got in store for me and stuff. So you definitely have a lot in store. I'm so proud of you. And your character, Rico, in sloppy seconds, man, we're gonna talk about it because when you had a premiere, something happened. We'll get into that a little later throughout the interview. But before we get into sloppy seconds, the film. Tell us who is the Sean D. Will Spivey. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up. Tell us who you are. Yeah. Um. So, ain't ain't really much. Like I, I really uh just be chilling and um. Uh, <laughs> my bad. I, I don't really be doing these little interview stuff. Um, I'm trying to think. What was the question? You probably got asked you like a question or something. Who is Deshaun D. Will Spy? If you could describe yourself in five adjectives, what are five things that you would say about yourself? I don't, I don't even know. Like, so shy, so cute. I know. <laughs> I, 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 I guess like cause I be I be really out the way. Like I really just be just working and stuff. So, um. Like I'm, I'm a, a dad, so I be, you know, my father, daddy duties and stuff, and then um, um, you know, uh, acting. Look in the comments. Yeah. Look in the comments. Look what they're saying about you. What? Oh, they, they saying, uh, oh, hold on. I, I ain't shy though. I, I, ain't, I don't think I'm shy. I think I just really, I don't really do all the talking stuff. I just, you know. So that's really about it. Well, we're going to do something that's like, a house, I mean, that's like an icebreaker at the end of our interview. So you get to ask me questions. I'll be put in a hot seat to make it a little bit easier. Because I've been doing interviews for a long time, and it can be nerve-wracking. So I totally understand. And shout out to my brother, K. Tooks. He said, you seem like a cool guy. Um, if you've not seen the film Sloppy Seconds, I need you guys to go and check that film out. And we'll be talking about that later in this interview. But you grew up in Chicago, and you know that there's a lot of talent that came from the Chicago area. I mean, you've got Jennifer Hudson, you've got Chance the Rapper, you've got Sherry Shepard. It's so many talented people who came from Chicago. And Cantrell says, tell us about your upbringing in the Chi-Town area of Chicago. Yeah, so I, I'm um, in the South Side pretty much my whole life. Um, um I ain't gonna lie, it was it was uh pretty rough, like a little rough upbringing, just uh yeah. like just the and stuff that I had to uh go through and everything. Uh, single mom, and uh I I got uh five sisters, so you know I was the uh, uh pretty much the only boy growing up, and then yeah, uh that was that was pretty much it, like as far as like my childhood. But At what it was cool. Go ahead, I'm sorry, I'm breaking you off. No, I was just. Saying like it was cool though, like we we had fun times and everything. That was the reality of it. At what age did you say acting was something that I want to pursue or get into? And if you watch television, who were some people that you looked up to actor wise? Um, man, 
I don't I don't even know. I'll probably say it was late. I ain't gonna lie, it was real late, probably like uh around the pandemic. You know, you get bored sitting in the crib, you just get to thinking like, damn, what what you good at, what can you do? And social media was that was pretty much every everybody was really on that like heavy during the pandemic. So I'm like, man, I probably could act or something. And then uh actors actors uh I probably say, uh, really, I like Jamie Foxx a lot, like, uh, just like his versatility, everything like that. Um, that's what I want to be. I want to be real versatile. You, you man, one of the greats because you, you are absolutely right. Jamie Foxx is very versatile. I love how he does music and then he does acting. He does so many things, and not only that, but he steps behind the lens as well too. He's producing. He's directing. Could you see yourself? possibly directing and producing or writing behind the scenes for films in the future? Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. That, that's, that's probably like a lot of pressure though. Uh, to each his own though. I, I'm sure like, you know, whoever, whoever be doing that, that's, uh, it's just a lot of work. You know, I'm, I'm cool just like acting for right now, but like people want like an input or something, I, you know, I'll throw in like an input or something, but no. Okay, okay, okay. So let's talk about the act. You you've started in a couple projects, and the one that we know you for, we know you as Rico and Sloppy Seconds. And this was such a great film because it talks for me as a woman, it was empowering to see a woman take her power back from these two men, her father and then the boyfriend. You did her so wrong in this film. So <laughs> this character, going and reading for this character, Rico, did, did you want to go for this role or did you have didn't have any idea that Rico would be this way in this film? Um Yeah, so initially when I auditioned, they didn't really have, have like a how he was gonna be. Like um okay so Miss Michelle uh she the author for it's based off a book and everything so uh she I wrote the book and um there wasn't um I didn't read the book at the time of audition so I didn't really know and then they didn't really have like a, a character description of the character they just saying like oh he you know um probably like a wild boy or some something like that like a street dude or something like that so. I'm thinking like, okay, I, I want to play one of these roles because I haven't played like a street character yet. You feel me? So I was always playing like comedic roles. And so um, when I came in, I, I just thought like, all right, I'm going to try to for this and see like what happened. And um, they, they, uh, yeah, they, 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 uh, can I cuss on here? Go ahead. Come on, man. <laughs> Cause I was really gonna say a customer. I'm thinking like, no, nah, I probably shouldn't say that. But no, nah, I, I, um, I, I have a potty mouth too. So I kind of, if you caught yesterday's episode, I I let a couple slip. So you are free to say it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, they they was fucking with it. So so it was just like, you know, um, and from there they they would just tell me like, yeah, just just be like that when you when you are uh, doing your acting. So. Did you have some creative input into this character? Because Rico is so believable. Something happened at a film premiere, which we'll get into after this question. But did you have any input into your character in this film? As far as like what? Like the aesthetic. Most actors, when they do a film, they have some input. It's like, okay, I'll give you an example. Um, Holly Berry in Catwoman. She had sweet know the original characters based off of Marvel comic books, correct? So she had an input as far as what she wanted the, the modernized version of Catwoman to look like. So for you, did you have any input as far as what you want your character to look like style-wise or what you wanted them to say, ad-libbing, all of those things? Yeah, I um there were like a few ad-libs, but that was that was like um in a moment, like uh once the camera got the roll and stuff. So like um it wasn't really like uh, a lot, a lot that was like rehearsed with uh, like my eyelids, but um, what helped was that um, uh, the uh, female that played uh, Keisha Jaina, she um, <clears throat> a lot of our scenes were together throughout the movie. A lot of my scenes was with, her. so we kind of like uh, fed off each other. So where, you know, in, in a lot of cases, 
that probably would not be like uh ideal for somebody to be like we often just say whatever i want to say because i might throw the other person off you feel what i'm saying but like she was man she man she was great with it so uh we she just allowed me to kind of like free roam a little bit with my lines and stuff so and then the directors too like everybody with it so and it made sense so but i don't we got I don't, some heavy hitters in here I, I lived in but yeah you are blessed, Deshaun, because you got some heavy hitters in here. Do you know who just came in at our interview? We have NAACP award nominee Choice Skinner, who is the host of his own podcast, CMT Show, here. And, and he's worked with some of the greats in the business. So shout outs to Choice Skinner and shout outs to Photos by Madeline. She works with the magazine publication that I write for. You guys know that I'm the fashion writer for Original Magazine UK. She's here. So you've got some heavy hitters in here in this interview. And we're talking about your film, Sloppy, Sloppy Second. Now, <laughs> film premiere. The film premiere. Something happened. I, I'm going to let you tell it. I know what happened, but I'm going to let you tell it. <laughs> you talk about... Uh, with the lady? Yes. And what happened at the film premiere? I what happened? I'm let I'm a lady, I'm tell it. <laughs> All right. So after the movie over with, we had like the uh like a movie premiere before it aired on Tubi or web. And so uh no, it's it's um I'm coming to Detroit. You feel me? Um I'm on I'm I'm feeling good, you know, I'm on uh cloud nine in the sky somewhere you know what i mean and um and i'm also tipsy i'm i'm intoxicated you know i'm above 21 i can say this so um i'm watching the movie or whatever and um the movie get, get over with i'm i'm my character is pretty much getting booed and stuff and but that's cool you feel me i was prepared because i had a, a little shiesty mask or whatever that i was going to pull down to, to get out the you know back door or whatever woo -woo. And so uh, <laughs> they telling me like, yeah, it's not going to be like that. It's really like they going to congratulate you or whatever, you know, for your role or whatever. All right, so cool. I'm leaving out. What happened is, uh, you know, I get, get a couple congratulations, but then this lady come out of nowhere, out the corner, just pushed me to the side. It was like, you that, you that Rico boy, woo, woo, you know, um, we, uh, is you really like that in real life and all, 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 all that type of stuff, right? And um, uh, <laughs> she grabbing my neck with it too, and she, and I'm just looking around like, do anybody see this? <laughs> she got her friends in the background. They, they co-signing the whole situation. Like this is, you know, like this is um supposed to be happening and stuff. And then, I mean, everything was cool though. You know, um, we ended up taking a picture and whatever. So, you know, that that was cool. It was yes. like. What's crazy is when you play a character and that character is so, I, I'm, a, I'm comparing you to another actor, Bernard Q. Settles. I've interviewed him on my platform from the Braxtons. Uh, his character, Pastor, it, playing a villain, you always get stereo, you always get criticism from people from playing a villain because they think that you are so much like your character. And it's just like, no, I'm not Rico. I'm Deshaun. I'm an actor. I did my job. I came in and I did my job. And when you've done your job that to the point where people hate you, right. that's major. That's major right there. Now, have the big, here's the big question. Has your mom seen the film? Has family seen the film? And what were their thoughts? Um, yeah, my, 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 uh, my family seen it. Um, my mom, my granny, they didn't, they weren't able to like watch the whole movie. I think they stopped like halfway through the scene. They, I don't think they could take it. Like to be honest, like they were just like, man, I don't want even want to see you in that light, or even think. I think it was so believable. You know? And um, and it was like real shocking just to see like uh, how many people was, was actually triggered from the movie. Like a lot of scenes triggered a lot women. of people, mainly women, because yeah. the main character focused on a woman, 
And right. there are women who go through this. So right. I know for me, I was upset too. And I was nervous. I wasn't going to be mad at you, but I was scared to do this interview with you. I'm being completely 100% honest. And I've done a lot of interviews throughout my career. I've been doing this since 2014. But I said, oh my God, what? What if he hates me? What if this interview goes wrong? But so far we are vibing and you're completely opposite than your character, Rico, because you're getting mad love in the comments. Like like I said, you had heavy, hit, heavy hitters come in here. Choice Skinner, who's a good friend of mine, who I've interviewed also, NAACP Image Award nominee. And then you had photos by Madeline. She's an international photographer in the UK area. So yeah, you don't. You never know who's gonna pop up in the audience. You did such an amazing job on this role, and it, the character was believable to the point where women it triggered us, and and we hate the character so much. So, coming from that, what was family's reactions to it? Like, what did your family say after seeing the films? Because I know it was hard to watch. Even for me, I had to pause in certain parts. The scene with the dog, if you know, you know, I couldn't watch that. So. What was family's reactions to it? What did they say? Um, it was it was like a lot of mixed emotion. Um, some some of them just was like, man, because like they know me, so to to see me like in that light, it was almost kind of like funny, like, oh man, he trying to act mad and he trying. To yeah. it. and it's a few of those like, because they don't know like some of my. Cause I'm real personal, like my personal life. I really like try to make that personal. So um, I don't bring a lot of like females around, like the family or nothing like that. So they they was kind of thinking like, oh, this how he is with females or something, you know? Like it was those type of questions. So it was just like um, you you definitely had those mixed um, mixed reviews. But I mean, for the most part, they they know me, and um, it never like uh derailed like you know past that like probably like a little moment, like two seconds or something. All right. So we've talked on sloppy seconds. For those of you, if you guys have not seen the film, you need to go and check it out. Um, my next question for you is, what do you think makes life meaningful? Because I watch you here. I see, and I watch some of your TikToks, and you're always putting a word of encouragement out there. And I said, I've got to get him on my show. So when I seen that before, because we both think alike, we both mirror alike, thinking positive. You you bring a lightness to the world. We're in dark times, and you bring a sense of how can I say it? a sense of ease, and you do it with humor and through your TikTok videos. So my next question for you is, what do you think makes life meaningful? What are some of the mind blockers and difficulties that you've overcame throughout this year? I, I think. I think really just um living out your purpose. It's like knowing knowing what you want to do and then just going for that. Like not not trying to uh wait for uh, a handout or wait for like uh somebody to give you that okay or that green light. You just gotta have that mindset, like look, I'm finna I gotta go do this, I wanna do this, and I and I, and it gotta happen. Like you gotta live out your purpose and, and find out what your purpose is. And then um a lot of obstacles I'll probably say just um and I, I ain't gonna say too much I was gonna get crazy over here hold on but just um just knowing that it's okay to be you you know it's okay to be you and it's okay to you know um that shit motherfuckers ain't gonna like you you know it's, it's cool though you know people people is not gonna accept you for who you is or or how you how you move in this world or anything like that but one thing, one thing I learned, and this vice versa, like how other people is like, you gotta respect people for how they is though. Like I, I respect honest, you honest with me. I can't be none, but I can't get mad. You feel me? And that, that's how I take it. Like just, just be yourself, cause I'm, I'm gonna be myself around anybody, you know. And I watched so I, your previous interview you did on the podcast. You, you talked about God and how influential the gentleman. He asked you. He said, "What is, what does D, D, um." D will look for in a woman and you were talking about God. I got to look, you know, I got to find myself with God. And right. what we're seeing now in this day and age, because I've been talking mostly with black men throughout this week, and they've been talking about mental health and spirituality. So that's one thing I commend you for talking about as well, too, is God and how he's influenced you throughout your life. Now, 
my next question for you is what is something that you could have a second chance with just in life or in general what is something that you could have a second chance with? a second chance um maybe with this active stuff if, if i if i could have stepped out earlier and just had to knew what i knew now like as far as like my confidence and cause i think that's what i lacked and that was like a obstacle that i'm still dealing with just having to overcome just like knowing that like man you you, you got it you just you got to believe in yourself and you gotta but if i if i could have just stepped out earlier probably like when i was like 15 14 or something or maybe like uh i don't know like redid school or something because my career path that i'm choosing jump in the way you, you jump right into acting listen it is and it goes back to what you just said it is never too late to follow your dreams right i started style by stevie right after high school right. graduating beauty school because i took up cosmetology as well too by trade and i got my license so i'm licensed to do hair nails makeup but i said my, my passion is always wanting to host a talk show so I went and I created my own path and I started interviewing friends who were in the industry, who were musicians, actors, and so much. It's never too late to follow your dreams. It's never too late to start whatever you want to conquer in your life. So you said a second chance for going back to school. If you want to go back to school, do it. Don't let anybody make you feel discouraged or anyway, because all oh, you started late and you said confidence. Um, a lot of People, there are a lot of people, cop, a lot of people think, oh, well, women just battle with confidence. No, men battle with it too. Everybody battles with confidence sometimes. And you don't just get it overnight. It's a process building it up, you mm -hmm. know, to be bold, to walk in your truth and stand out there and go for whatever it is that your career desires are. Now, I know our parents, as far as all of us, they didn't want us. It's some of our parents, and I'm going to keep it a stack, they didn't want us in the industry. They didn't want us to be an actor. They wanted us to go to school or what? Be a doctor or, you know, a lawyer. All of these things. And that's just like, that's not in the cards for me. God has had something else. So when God puts something else out there in the universe for you, you take that opportunity. It's never too late. Never too late to follow your dreams. And I tell people this all the time. Live life fire i'm a scorpio and we are water signs we are very 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 passionate about whatever it is that sets our soul on fire mm. so um i grew up with four brothers two sisters and out of all the ones you can guess who's the most spontaneous and inquisitive and outspoken you're looking at it. <laughs> but my next question for you is if you could go back and reflect in time on anything, what would you change? Mm, I I ain't gonna lie. It, it's not it's not too much uh like change about it. I mean, I I look at it for what it is. You know, every everything happens for a reason. You know, um, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. You know, it's all about the do do it like. How you want to live this life this year 2024 has been challenging and i've been talking to black men all throughout this week <clears throat> about we touched on mental health how right. are you doing mentally how are you doing mentally with everything that's going on in the world i'm pretty sure you've seen you know who was back in court showing his ass again <laughs> so how are you dealing mentally who, who in court right now um our, let's just say a former president that we had is in court oh uh, uh, yeah uh, I, I thought you were talking about the uh, agent orange yeah agent orange uh, but no nah, um, um I, i'm i'm good man i i'm i'm cool you know obviously I, you know things could be better you know you want things to be better, but I'm cool. I'm alive. I'm blessed. You know, um, um, too much I can complain about. You know? Absolutely. And I talk to people all about this all the time. Make sure that you are protecting your peace because your peace is sacred and it's valuable as well, too. And when you talked about God in that podcast interview, I said, yes, 
finally, black men are starting to open up and talk about spirituality, talk about mental health. Because for so long, the black community, we have been programmed to just shut down and just sweep things up under the rug. So I applaud you for that, Deshaun, because not a lot of black men talk about it for, for decades, for eons. The black collective has been taught to just sweep it up under the rug and not talk about it. You know, go to God, talk to God about it. But faith without work is dead. And if you are not talking about it, use your resources. Because mm-hmm. God put the resources out here as far as mental health. Talk to someone. People won't know unless you speak, unless you say something. So when you talked about God, that stood out to me as well, too. And finding talked about the perfect woman in your life, finding the perfect woman in your life and things as well, too. So now we're going to shift gears because that was kind of hit. But if you could star in an iconic classic film, which character would you be and which film would it be? Mm. So I uh, good movies. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Friday. I, I'll play us. Uh, I kind of had an idea that you were gonna say that. I was thinking another film. I was gonna say either, man, you have got Juice with Tupac. It's so many. Um, D. Marie the Star says Smokey from Friday. Oh, shout out D. Shout out Trail, Veranda, uh, Marty, Pat. I see a lot of. A lot of y'all on here. But um yeah, yeah, smoky. Now we talk about creativity and comedy. What are some other film genres that you would like to explore in your acting career? Because we've seen you in drama, we've seen you in comedy. What other film genres would you like to explore? Uh what's next now? Uh what a scary movie or something? That would probably be mm. I mean, like a romance movie too. I, I got a romantic vibe. That I want to, you know. I feel like I got. Yes, a you got to come back after um Rico because women are upset right now. They, but the character was so believable. So I would love to see you in other film genres: action, uh, romance, of course, comedy, of course, horror. That's what I could. I'm, that's what I'm manifesting for you in the future. Yeah. Yeah, I want I want to try to tap into it to it all. Try to see what it is. Plan plan what what mm-hmm. the sloppy seconds a, a drama? You said a drama. Yeah, it's more so like a drama because it's it's centered around a woman and her life, based off okay. of a novel and it's centered around her and her life. So we've seen you in like how can I say it, drama, comedy, type. And Dee Marie says she still loves you. <laughs> It's all uh shout out Shay. How y'all coming? Y'all Shay? Yeah, a lot of your supporters are coming here to see you. How does that make you feel? The film is out, everyone is talking about it, and it's mixed reactions to it. So how does that feel making you know that you still <laughs> your supporters here, your family, friends, everybody's watching. Yeah, these these are my little homies, man. They they all cool with me. <laughs> they are my homies. But um no, it's 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 all love. Um, yeah, it's all love. Um, it, it's it's just crazy that the impact we had. Like sitting back thinking about it, sometimes like, oh yeah, that was, that was a viral movie. Like I remember my phone was just going off like for <laughs> like two weeks. I probably like going off. Like I was getting all these friend requests, all this, you know, crazy DMs and stuff. But you know, um, through it. All, like it, it's been all love. Like I appreciate. It. Um, you know, we we definitely worked hard in that movie. Like blood, sweat, and tears for real. Like literally. <laughs> and the character was so believe. Again, I keep saying it because the when you do a film project and the character is so believable, the character is so evil, so dark, and people are hating the character. You know, you did your job. Mm-hmm. You know, you did your job. And Taraji P Henson, she said something. Um, as far as it pertains to actors picking out the character, she was referring to Cookie Lion. She said, I'm not going to do it if it doesn't scare me. So as, as it pertains to actors taking certain roles, 
you're up for a challenge. You're going to have some criticism behind it. You're going to have people that's going to hate the character, but it's just like, you got to separate the, okay, you're, that's the character, and now I'm myself now. I'm no longer the character. Yeah. So people have trouble with that sometimes. You have to separate the two. The character of the show, and then they act the person themselves. So yeah. when you go home, you don't bring it home with you, but sometimes that happens, where it's just like, because there's method acting where actors literally will stay in character that character will follow them home i can give you an example um who was it kiki palmer kiki palmer said she um was portraying a role as a pimp she was a female pimp she said she took that character home with her and her parents was like okay snap out of it girl you're no longer the character anymore so that happens so yeah, mentally, you have to make sure that you are, okay, I got to tune in, I got to tune out. You see what I'm saying? Tune in, tune out. Clock in, clock out. It's just like, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, um, it's, no, it's crazy you say that because uh, that, that's what uh, type of actor I am, too. <laughs> you bring the ca the character home with you? Mm -mm, I, that's crazy, though. I don't do all that, though. <laughs> Like once they say cut, I'm probably rolling up. We we smoking or something <laughs> right after the scene. <laughs> Again, tune in, tune out. That's what it is. That's so, what you got. Me. But no, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie. I probably was worried. Like once that movie was over, with, I probably was thinking to myself, like, man, I'm probably gonna have a moment. Like once I hang around a female or something, we get cool, real cool or something. I'm probably gonna tweak out or something. No, it ain't happened yet. I, I'm blessed, you know. That's old. Oh, I don't even remember. I don't even know no lines from that movie. <laughs> For real. Okay, we're going to switch to a lighter note. <laughs> We're talking music. What is some of your, what music gets you in the mood when you are on set? Like, I know that when you're on set behind the scenes, then you're rehearsing your lines or whatever, there's got to be a music that you listen to. What type of music do you like? I mean, can I uh, use the the movie like uh, cause we was listening to music um on set for that uh that sloppy seconds movie um okay. I a lot of freaky music. Okay, hello. <laughs> so um, you feel me? We we were listening to that little Corey. A lot of a lot of you know, get you in that mood with music. You know. Skill baby. Question. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm no. cutting you off. Hello, baby. If you have the chance to put something on a billboard worldwide next week, what would it be? Um a billboard or something on a billboard. Uh I'll put it. Uh, I guess everybody that I work with, like as far as like uh, that helped me along this acting journey. We all up on there, cause I, I'm still like I still talk to uh a lot of them on a daily basis and stuff. So like, you know, I have like all of us billboard. Okay, we started right here, started from the bottom. Now we here type thing, you know. All right fashion dolls and it is time i know you guys have questions if you guys have any questions for d will or myself feel free to type them in the comments but it is time to get into our two games fashion dolls are y'all ready now i told y'all in the beginning of the interview that i was going to be put in a hot seat sean here is going to ask me some questions as many as he wants as many as he curious he is because i know that doing interviews can be again nerve-wracking so Make sure you guys have your questions ready. But before we do the turn the tables, we're going to get into something that I like to call the rapid five. And Deshaun has to tell me five things that he can't live without. It can be his favorite drink, his favorite football team, his favorite show he likes to binge watch, all of these things. All right. So what are five things that D. Will can't live without? Um, five things. Um, I'd probably say uh, 
religion, my health, uh, family, um, I, uh, dang. Yeah, that, that's about it. I ain't really got nothing. Everything else, I think I'll be cool with. Like, if it was... Some people would say their phone. Yeah, if it, if it came down to it, I don't, you know, I'll, I'll be cool. Don't know about Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's about three things. Cool. All right, those three, we'll take them, Fashion Dogs. It is time. My heart is beating so fast because I have no clue what he's going to ask me. <laughs> it is time to turn those tables, Fashion Dogs. Are y'all ready? So Deshaun here is going to ask me some questions, as many as he wants. It can be related to fashion, life, beauty, whatever he wants to know about Miss Stevie. And the viewers for the new fresh new faces in the audience. This is a lot of new faces here, and I see some familiar ones. And whatever you guys are curious to know, you'll know through his question. All right. So take it away, the shop. All right. So um, you say you a Scorpio, right? Yeah. Is you is you big? You say, on Halloween. Yes, my mom. Mom's a Libra, October seventh, and I'm mine's is October thirty first. Follow. Okay, okay. So, um, what? Well, uh, uh, are you big on like the the uh, zodiac sign? Like, you believe that your your uh whoever you're attracted to on the sign is probably like a good partner, ideal partner. I'm not that deep in it, but I've clicked with every zodiac sign. Now I fell out with some. But Gemini's, uh, Libras, Leos, Sagittarius, me, I'm the type of Scorpio. I can get along with any environment I try to fit in. And my friend said this, you're like a chameleon in a way because you you know how to blend in in any situation. And so for me, if I'm attracted to any zodiac sign, but it's Aries or whatever, and that chemistry is there, it's set, it's lit. But for one thing about Scorpio is that we are very, very passionate. So. I must say that. Well, what happened? Um, like your first relationship. Could you brief- briefly tell us what happened in that? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, my very first relationship. It was sort of like a how can I say it? A summer love thing. We did our thing over the summer or whatever, and me and this gentleman was talking. <laughs> And sometimes th- things don't work out for, you know, for the best. Mm-hmm. And we went out separate ways. So to make, make a long story short, you know, you see different ways of opinion, especially if you're dating someone long distance. That's even more difficult. So, yeah. That's why it didn't work out. A long, long distance relationship. All right. So, so if, you, if, you was, uh, if you wasn't into, like, fashion and stuff like that, is there like a secret hobby that you got? A secret like thing that you do? Uh, oh my God. You put me on the spot with this one. I call myself when I'm not live, I will make my mom laugh. And she knows that I'm a big Jennifer Lewis fan. Like I can try myself trying to impersonate her or imperson if you guys have seen Jackie's back with Jennifer Lewis, I know the film word for word, and I would go and I would call myself trying to impersonate her. I would be Jackie Washington. So that's something that people don't know about me. I try to impersonate behind the scenes and make people laugh. I'm, I'm a goofball. I love to have a good time. Is you uh, uh, So that's the only person you could do, Jennifer Lewis? Yes, Jennifer Lewis. I, I think your fans want to see what you could do. No, Deshaun. No, don't do that. Okay. D. Marie is laughing. Okay. It's one scene in Jackie's back, okay, where she's having the press conference. If you guys seen it, um, she's talking about a relaxer. She had a relaxer, and Dolly Parton is in the film. So it's one scene. She goes like this. Hold on. And one more thing my lawyers told me to say. I never 
advertised essence of Jackie for dogs. Some woman coming up in here talking about it made her poodle hair fall out or something. I don't know, child. So <laughs> if you if you know, you know. <laughs> you sound just like her too. People be saying that. Um, I get that sometimes, but <laughs> I don't like her when you just did that. That's crazy. That was crazy. Oh, y'all like it. Thank y'all. <laughs> if you've seen Jackie's Back, that is that is my favorite Jennifer Lewis movie. If not that one, of course, What's Love Got to Do With It? She was the mom. She was everybody's mom. Um, She was Tupac's mom in the film sh that Tupac did with Janet Jackson, Poetic Justice. I mean, she's everybody's mom. She's everybody's aunt as well, too. So that's one of my favorite movies. So if the cameras are not rolling here, and I'm not live, you better believe I'm doing some sort of Jennifer Lewis impersonation or something behind the scenes, dancing and yeah, something to make people laugh. Yeah, she a good actress too. Who who are um? I'm sure Jennifer Lewis is probably like uh one of your favorite actresses. Um, who who else would you say is like your top actors and actresses? My favorite top actor. He's no longer here. Um, Chadwick Boseman, and he came right here for my hometown south carolina so sad that he's not here um jeffrey wright is another one i love holly berry i love to roger p henson love monique um octavia spencer is another one who else do i like that is a great, great actor sterling k brown uh as you, you mentioned jamie fox jamie fox is one of my favorites too um denzel washington Nobody can do it better. I mean, a lot of actors, he is the creme de la creme. And a lot of the actors that I've sat with and interviewed, they said if they could do a project with anybody, their top choices, well, some, even some that are like underrated that don't get the credit. Don Cheeto is another one. So Denzel and Will Smith are their top two. So he's the creme de la creme. Those are a few of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm some top actors right there. Um, <clears throat> my bad. What What about like your uh, favorite movies and stuff? Like my favorite the movie. I love Baps. I love Baps with Holly Berry. That's one of my favorites. Um, I love comedies. So the Nutty Professor, the Eddie Murphy version, because there was another one that came out that didn't have Eddie Murphy in there. I love comedy. I love drama as well too. Um, another one of my favorite movies. For my ladies, if you're watching Wait and Exhale, I'm a big Whitney Houston fan. Big Whitney Houston fan. I have a picture of her. If you take a look in the background, you see her and Rihanna in the background when I posted the outfit of the day. I have a wall of all of these powerful women, and Whitney's on the wall for sure. Um, another one of my favorite movies, Juice with Tupac. There, there'll never, never be another Tupac Shakur. And my sister, she was a big Tupac fan. So he was one of the greats in rap music. So those are a few of my favorites. Um, I like the Double Wears Prada, Lady Sings, the, Boo, the Blues with Diana Ross. So there's so many. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that Juice movie was uh, epic. And to know, um, I think that, uh, if I remember, I think that was Tupac's first first movie. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would love to play Bishop too. Going to your other question uh, previously, but yeah, that's uh, yeah, Juice was a good movie. So, and it's a cult classic film. If you guys have seen Minister Society, you've seen Boys to the Boys in the Hood, you've seen Friday, you've seen uh, what's the other one? Above the Rim, all of these type of things, and Juice would be right up there. That's top tier. Those are cult classic films that I just went through. Yeah, for sure. Well, what you uh seeing yourself like all right, in five years, like you a five year plan or you feel like you live out, out your dream right now? Right now I'm at the prime, I'm at the happiest of my life that I've ever been. Because there have been days that have been very, very dark for me doing this platform, coming on and then having to put on a smile. But I at thirty years years old, I'm, I'm proud to be here, alive and living. So 
five years from now, I could see myself. I have a nephew now. So I'm telling my age, I'm 30, but I have a nephew now. My brother um, has this beautiful, beautiful baby boy. And we talk about legacy. So five years from now, I could see myself designing fashion. I could see myself having my designs walk down the runway at Paris Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week. Um, having a network where Black creatives like yourself, actors, directors, Black creatives. Y'all heard what I said, Black, right? Because Black filmmakers do not get their credit in just doing this business. And we touched on that yesterday with Andre Joseph. So I would love to see myself, Oprah has her network. I would see myself as the second Black woman to have her own network where actors, producers, directors can come and put their projects on there, independent. Because I believe that independent filmmakers and producers do not, that when it comes to producing projects and putting them out on Tubi, they're looked down on, but I'm just like, they're just as good as an MGM Pictures, as a Warner Brother Pictures, as a Viacom Pictures. These are Black filmmakers, and they're not getting their credit. So what I would do with my network, if from five years from now, I would have those Black filmmakers on my network. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you you trying to have black on, get it black on again. You better believe it, because black again in this industry in this business is very fickle. Uh, black actors, black actresses, they don't get the opportunities as the palm colored people. Right. That's what I call them, palm colored people. So where, where, where would you have this, like, would you, um, because you in South Carolina, right? So where would you have that, yes. uh, your headquarters would be in, in, in South Carolina, I'm assuming? I want my headquarters to be all over the world. I mean, you got all of these, and I'm a high fashion girl. I love Chanel. I love Terry Mugler. I love Valentino, Oscar de la Renta, um, Comme des Garçons, Parenza Score, all of these fashion houses. I would have my headquarters all over the world and that's what I would want it to be based so that anybody who's a black filmmaker's director can come and launch their projects on my network. That would be my dream. Yeah, they're saying in the comments, that's dope. Yeah, because I mean, you, how many black women do you know have their own cable networks? The only one who I can think of is Oprah. At this point, it's Oprah. Own network. So is you is you trying to the uh the film industry too, like direct and stuff? I would love to direct. I would love to produce. I would love to you guys see me here doing this platform every day you see my face. But I would love to be behind the lens as well too. Now a lot of people for a lot of actors, some actors that I've interviewed, they're just like, why haven't you done acting? I've done one horror film, y'all. And I went in with no acting experience. And I went to the table read and executed this character so perfectly. And the director of this project, the assistant, which is out now, um, he said, I'm going to create a character in your likeness. There's a catch, though. And I got the role on my birthday. So he messaged me and he said, how would you like to do a film? I said, I'm not an actress. I, I've never acted before a day in my life. So he <laughs> offered me this part. He said, I got you. The part was a college professor. So I had to play this college professor, you know, and he didn't want me to look like any of the students. So he said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We want you to have short hair for the film. Ladies, y'all know I had a problem with that. Because <laughs> as you can see today, I'm rocking the inches. And when I had this interview, I had at least 20 inches of hair going down my back. So he said, I want you to have short hair for this role. I said, I, I can do this. I can do this. If I can change up fashion, I can change up hair. It's no problem. Boom, boom, boom. Went in with no experience. Went to the table read. Executed it perfectly. So that was my first ever acting experience. And the assistant to reconnecting, which is out now and all platforms, Amazon Prime, and you guys can check it out on YouTube as well to Dante Productions. So, yeah. Is there, um, <clears throat> like some, some, uh, you, well, I guess I, I say, is there a role that you, you want to be comfortable doing and, and like, explain, like, why 
Like, would that be the reason? Like, what what are some of the things you want to be comfortable doing? Ooh, um, the cat. The type of character that I would see myself is you guys seen Boomerang with Eddie Murphy, right? Y'all remember God rest her soul. I love I love Eartha Kitt. She's the original Catwoman. Her character, Lady El- Eloise. I would be like the I would like to be the head of her because I'm such a makeup and hair girl. I would like to be a head of my own cosmetics company. That's the type of character, a boss woman or uh how y'all say it, a boss, mm, that type of thing. But the type of character I wouldn't be comfortable playing is something like some single white people. I, Who? Mentally, yes. Who? If you're going to play a character that evil, that dark, you got to tune Again, it was what I was telling Deshaun in the beginning of the interview. You got to tune in and tune out, and you got to be able to separate the character from the person because it can be a mental thing. Mentally, you have to detox because you bring that character home, and they just be like, look, whoa. You're no longer a character now. You are yourself. You're in your space. So I mentally, that's why I wouldn't portray a character like that. Because you got to really, really go there. Again, it goes back to method acting. So you said, you said something. You said a sinister. Like like single white female, something evil, something dark like that. You got to mentally, or you guys have seen Obsessed with Idris Elba with a girl. (laughs) Y'all know. Something like that. Like a crazy, deranged girlfriend. I just could not play that type of role because mentally, it's just like, okay, I had a clock in, clock out. And it wears you out, literally. Oh. When Lupita did Us, the horror film, y'all remember Lupita? She did the film um, Jordan Peele, Us, the horror film where she had the scissors. Yeah. She said she literally had to mentally detox this character because it was so draining. And another one is Heath Ledger, the Joker, rest his soul. He literally had to mentally detox from that character too. Yeah. So those type of characters I can't. Yeah. No, I I get what you mean because even back with that uh sloppy second like playing re- it was really uh mentally like I'm over I'm sleep. <laughs> Like after a scene or something, I'm knocked out. Like once we done for the day, I'm probably sleep on on the floor somewhere. Just close all my clothes still on because I'm so tired. You know, like be, being mad the, the entire movie. Just imagine like <laughs> it, mad and evil, and you literally have to detox this character out. Like it's like a release because when you're in cat, when you're in game mode, and it says okay, go. And then when that director calls cut, it's just like, it's like a sigh of relief. Yeah. But I could be those type of characters. The type of characters that I would be is, y'all seen Vera and Meet the Browns, like the drunk auntie or something like that. Something funny. That's what I could see myself doing. Comedy or the boss, like multifaceted, a, a number of characters. But hey, maybe one day I'll change my mind, but right now it is not for me. Because I've seen interviews where actors were just like, I had to pull back a little bit mm-hmm. because I'm no longer a character. I'm myself now. And now it's to the point where it's taking a toll on me mentally. Ooh, yes. Like Atasha Smith, Angela, and Why Did I Get Married? Yes, I definitely. Because I'm kind of like that in real life. I'm very protective over my friends and family. Those are two things that are dear to my heart. So in a way, I can see myself portraying Angela, I can see that. Yeah, like like the drunk auntie, or you know. Oh uh, yeah, that, that was all my question. I I, I won't go and overdo it. <laughs> all right, and we have it, fashion dolls. Do y'all have any questions for myself or Deshaun here? This was such a great interview and conversation, and we went way over. This is this is like an hour long conversation, so. Before, while you guys are typing, before we wrap up, what is something that you're manifesting for yourself in the future? Um, I I want to start taking the acting serious. I want to really get into uh, learning more about the business of acting. Cause at first I was just really just taking a chance with it, like reading some lines and trying to memorize it, not knowing that it's uh so many more layers with it 
So just understanding the business of that and just really trying to go after that. So that's what I'm on. And you keep doing what you're doing because you're doing an amazing job. This character, Rico, is so believable. Again, like women, we are in mixed emotions over this character. But at the end of the day, we understand that you are playing a character and you're not like that in real life. And that brings me to my last question because you did, and when you did the interview on the podcast, because there's a lot of female, there's a lot of women that are watching that want to know is he on the market? What do you look for? What is the some of the qualities that you look for in a woman? Um, um yeah, she she just she just really gotta be herself. Um, I, I'm really on that type of time now where I'm just like I ain't gonna like looks matter. Looks play a part. We 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 got beyond humans in this world, but but like I'm at a point where like I just gotta be able to like grow with you. If I if I feel like we growing together. Then, then I, I feel like that's a win, you know. So that's what I'm on. Like we just, just on that same type of time. Oh, and we got a question for you. Um, I got you, fraternal. Um, my fraternal Allen Yankee says, "How do you feel about people who play roles too well, and you can't decipher if it's a character?" <laughs> I mean, we, I don't know. That's a good question. That's a good question because uh, our our Jamie Fox in the movie uh, Ray when he played Ray, that oh, yeah. was just just amazing, right? Um, I was young when that movie came out, so um, I'm thinking it was really Ray Charles for real. Like, I'm, I I was like really, really like uh blown away by his performance, and I think it's you know like uh, what type of character they playing? Like if they playing like one of them evil characters, you probably do probably look at them like oh, this dude away, but those those type of kids that really play their role. I mean, actors who play their role to perfection. I feel like I don't know. Shit, you, you gotta tip your hat to them. And this, so again, it's so believable. Like the way he was playing the piano in that film, to the head movements, he had it down pat. That's just like when T, when Angela Bassett portrayed Tina Turner. Mm -hmm. Like. She wore Tina Turner out, and she said she had the terrain. If you look at her body, her body was snatched, and she still looks good. Like, she wore Tina Turner out. So it's the same for Jamie Foxx and Ray. Like, he, Ray Charles, when he, I went back and I've watched some of his performances, and I'm just like, oh, my God. It's like he's mirroring everything that Ray Charles would do to the way he talks. So you can tell these actors really, really, really train and study these characters so, so, so right. well. Right. And it's, it's, it's a process to get into character and then to be able to take it off at the end of the day and go home. Definitely. Yeah, that was, that was, yeah, for Jamie, that was probably a different level. And that that's really what I'm trying to get at because with, with the uh, Rico playing him, it wasn't, it wasn't really, too much I was trying to like dig into I was just really just trying to memorize these lines and you know everything else like just went how it was supposed to go when when the camera got rolling but I mean yeah like that's what I'm trying to get at right there I'm trying to get to that point where I'm over really studying these characters and it's coming I'm manifesting that for you in the future do we have any other questions fashion dolls Ooh, now fraternal. Why you do that? You know I love her. Um, he says, "Do you think Monique was acting in Precious or projecting?" Monique, Monique. Uh, <laughs> what you think? I, I would let you answer that. Listen, I think that she was acting because the mom. I mean, to when she had the. We know in the black household, we know our moms that they smoke and smoke. Uh, they the way she held the cigarette, everything. Again, it goes back to being believable. I think she was at. Then, then, then she won an Oscar for that. Sure did. Yeah, I, hey, that that was uh, and that like that just showed off her range too. Cause I think that was like the first time I ever seen her in that in that type of light. And it's and something serious because we see her the queens of comedy. Yeah. The Parkers, of course. We've seen her in Three Strikes with Brian Hooks. 
So, I mean, we know Monique for comedy, but it's just like with Marlon Wayans. We seen him in the Aretha Franklin movie with Jennifer mm -hmm. Hudson. And we mm -hmm. know him for what? The Wayans brothers and live in color. That's what we know him from. So, again, it goes back to that range that you were talking about, Deshaun, being able to be funny and then being able to switch over to say, okay, I don't want to be funny in this role. I might go back and bounce back to comedy, but that's my roots, but I want to try something different. Right, right. All right, Fashion Dolls, do we have any questions for myself or Deshaun? This was such a great interview, and we went over an hour. I know you loved her. I had to spice. I knew you loved her. I had to spice it up. That's my girl. I love Monique. <laughs> and if you guys have not seen the Club Shay Shay interview, y'all need to go and check it out. <sighs> okay. Final thoughts, Deshaun. If you, you could go back and tell your younger self something, what would you tell your younger self? Um. Yeah. Just, just uh, believe in yourself. Know, know that you you got what it takes to do whatever you want to do in this world. It, it, it starts with you. And, um, yeah, yeah. You, you got you to gotta have that power. In your, like, educate your mind. Education is so important. People don't really realize that, but, like, if you uh, educate your mind, is so powerful. So just don't, like, never stop, like, uh, yourself on, on just the world, you know? So that's, that's what Absolutely. And to tie into what Deshaun just said, today's final thought, and I was gonna, I'm was gonna, i going to show you guys um, what I promised yesterday in today's show today, so you guys will see it. But today's final thought comes from Ava DuVernay, and she says, I'm not going to continue knocking that old door that doesn't open for me. I'm going to create my own door and walk through that. Now, we talk about creating our own seats at the table. So when Sean asked me that question, where do you see yourself in five years? We all have to ask ourselves that question. Where do we see ourselves in the next lifetime? We talk a lot about legacy because we've seen so many people come and go this year. Lou, I mean, Lou Gossett Jr., who was one of the greats, first Black man to win an Oscar award. We lost him this year. We lost so many people. So many talented people that are no longer here. Take, take off from the Migos. We lost him. We lost so many people who are no longer here. You have to sit and think and ask yourself that question. Where do I see myself in the next lifetime? Am I going to keep continuing to do the same thing and expecting different results? Or am I going to try to change up my message? What's going on, on, bro? And that is from Prince. Keep inspiring family. And that was for you. <laughs> and that's what Prince just said also, too, was where I was getting at. Make sure that you guys are going. Live life through fire and never sell yourself short. If someone doesn't give you an opportunity, because in this business, I realize that you're going to get a lot of notes. It can be in radio. It can be hosting a show, guests, whatever. You're going to get a lot of no's in this business. But don't let these no's deter you from getting to your next phase and destination of your life. So if no one is going to open a door for you, you go and create your own door for yourself. And Nina Simone, to add on to this quote, she has a quote that goes like this. I get up from the table when love is no longer being served. So if it doesn't serve me purpose, I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to go and create my own opportunity. So that is the final thought of the day. And as promised, I promised you guys that I was going to bring her out so you guys could see her. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pink Splendor Barbie. And this is her, her gown. So I have no, no place to put her. The box is huge. She is so beautiful. I told you guys that I've been collecting Barbies. I started collecting Barbies in 2023. And I got her as a Christmas gift. So, yep, I promised you guys I was going to bring her out and show her. And I gave her a good home. She's here. <laughs> so. Before we close out, Deshaun, where can everyone follow you and check you out? Um, yeah, Instagram, dwill underscore 3K. All right, Fashion Dolls. And this interview will be uploaded to Style by Stevie daytime on YouTube. So you guys head on over there, subscribe, and hit that bell so you'll be notified 
And we're on the road to 600 interviews. This would be 597. Yes, we are on the road to 600. So thank y'all for my new viewers, subscribers, followers. Thank you all so much for your love and unconditional support. Tuning in each week, Monday through Friday. Joining me tomorrow, we have Tony L. Austin, who will be joining me. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow at 4 p.m. EST and tune in. We're going to have a great week. This has been an amazing week. I've had a fabulous day. And Deshaun, it was such a pleasure meeting you. Your energy is just amazing. And I look forward to chatting with you again. All right. I appreciate the lessons. All right. See you. You too. Take care, everyone. All right.